I'm a little bit nervous because I'm about to show you guys one of the most brutal and efficient ways to go about training your quads with minimal equipment. Let's go. This is not going to be fun whatsoever, but we're going to do it because this is some very, very effective stuff I'm teaching you guys about when it comes to training, not just quads, but any body part in general. Um, one of my absolute favorite methods to be using is to be using isometrics in some way. This could be low intensity, long duration isometrics, more from a rehabilitation perspective. But today we're using it more in the context of creating a lot of uh, stimulation and activation of your muscle fibers. So this is very, very important when we're looking at trying to create the activation that we'd normally have to rely on very heavy weights or training with very, very, very high amounts of reps with light weights to be able to achieve, which is probably not going to be very, very efficient. Because when we're looking at trying to activate what's called the high threshold motor units, you have to either use somewhere around a five or six rep max or heavier to be able to create that recruitment, or you have to take something like a light, like a 20 rep max, to that 20 rep fatigue point. Which, if, we, if we're being asked to do something like a 20 rep or a 30 rep or 40 rep set, it's kind of exhausting. And I know that I probably wouldn't want to do that. So this is a way that we can sort of hack both of those methods where we have lightweight or minimal weight, and we don't want to spend a billion hours doing a billion reps. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I've got the heel elevation here. I'm using a plate. You could be using a textbook. You could be using anything that you have lying around the house or that you have available to be able to elevate your heels. The reason why I do this when I'm doing the squat movement we're about to do is it allows me to maintain a very upright torso. You see, if I had my heels flat on the ground, my body's going to always biomechanically want to shift forwards just like this, which will shift more of the loading through my lower back and my hip extensors. Now, this is not inherently a bad thing, and maybe you do want to train that position if you're looking more for maybe deadlift specific or posterior chain training, but if we're looking more at quads and the squat pattern, elevate your heels. It's not a bad thing, it's not a band-aid fix, it's using mechanics intelligently to allow you to stay more upright, to stimulate the muscles that you care about. So, we're elevating the heels, and I'm standing over a towel to begin with. We're going to squat down with that upright torso, grab onto the towel, and we want to um, pull them tight at about this height here. So I am just above the parallel point. You could go a little bit lower, but you'll find that you reach fatigue much faster, and you probably have a hard time staying just here. So come just that little bit above, as long as you maintain the upright torso and you don't dump forwards like so. If you find yourself dumping forwards, elevate your heels even higher. There's no set rule to how high or how low you elevate your heels. The thing we care about, the benchmark we care about, is the upright torso. So for me, that's around here-ish. I'm gonna get into position. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull as hard as I can up as I'm trying to squat, but of course, the towel is keeping me fixed in place, so I can't get any higher. I can't like lift myself up off the ground and levitate, unless if Calvin's got some really, really cool video editing skills. But I don't think he's, are you there yet? Not quite, soon, we're Pushing we'll it. We'll see, we'll see. We'll get there. Anyway, pushing up as hard as you can. Hold this for 20 seconds. 20 seconds with a maximal push as hard as you can. Now I'm not doing that right now because I'm talking to you guys, um, but just pretend I'm pushing as hard as I can. I'm trying to rip that towel through the ground. You know what, I'll give you guys five seconds. It looks like this. <clears throat> All right, so we'll skip that over for 20 seconds. Imagine that was 20 seconds, and that already is actually quite fatiguing and stimulating. 20 seconds like that, maximal voluntary contraction, pushing through the towel the entire time. Don't let off any steam at all. Once you've done that, you want to grab onto a weight. Now I'm using weights, you might not have weights available, but these are 20 pound dumbbells. And if you do the isometronic correctly, which is what we just did there, you won't need much weight at all. It's a 20 pounds, and this is gonna be more than enough to challenge me. So what we're going to do here, hold them by your side, put them up in a goblet position if you want as well, I'm gonna squat all the way down under control, add in a pause here in this bottom position, and push back up. So now we're doing isometric training as well, but we're doing a slightly different type of isometric. This here 
is probably the isometric training you're probably more familiar with, which is your basic isometric holding statically in position, three seconds coming back up. Maintaining that upright torso, holding that position, pushing straight back up. Down. Just gonna do one more rep. Down and straight back up. So that there, oh, that's 40 pounds or 20 pounds per side, which is extremely light when you're looking at training the legs, but I can tell you honestly, that was actually quite challenging. And that was me only doing really a five second isometronic with the towel. Had I have gone for the full 20 seconds or 30 seconds, I guarantee you, I would have failed on those squats. Give it a shot and let me know what you guys think about that. And in terms of sets and reps, I usually aim for around three sets like this. Because of the recruitment we're getting, we're getting this activation of the high threshold motor units, you want to be taking a complete rest. You want to take a good three minutes, if not longer, between each round. Trust me, if you do it right, you will need that extended rest period to properly recharge and make sure you can give another good effort in the second set. Ideally, you have enough weight that you're failing at about this 8 to 12-ish rep mark on the squats. But again, honestly, that was 20 pounds per hand. That was not much at all. So you really don't need much weight to be able to create that challenge because the recruitment and the fatigue has been set in place from the isometronic. Anyway, hope you guys learned something and found this video useful. Give it a shot. Let me know how you go with it. And of course, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm gonna see all of you guys next time.